Elliot Larkin Ferguson, known better as Pete Spence, supposedly claimed in the 1880 Tombstone Census, his age being 28, and that he was born in Texas. He listed his occupation as stock raiser. Obviously, very little is known about his youth, but he enlisted in the Texas Rangers under the Captain Wallace in 1874. Pete was wanted for robbery in Goliad County, Texas in 1878, and he fled the area for the Arizona Territory near Bisbee and Tombstone, where he began using the name Peter M. Spencer. In Tombstone, Spence lived immediately across the street from the Earps in a house which still stands. For a time, he ran Vogan's Saloon. In October 1880, Spence was charged with grand larceny on a charge of possessing stolen Mexican mules, but was never convicted. Spence was also a business partner of Frank Stilwell in the Franklin Mine and other mining ventures, and also in a Bisbee saloon. In August of 1881, he married Marietta Duarte. In September 1881, a stagecoach on the Sandy Bob Line in Tombstone, bound for Bisbee, was held up by two masked men. They robbed all of the passengers of their valuables, since the stage was not carrying a strong box. During their robbery, the driver heard one of the robbers describe the money as sugar, a phrase known to be used by Frank Stilwell. Stilwell had, until the prior month, been a deputy sheriff for Johnny Behan, but had been fired. Deputy U.S. Marshal Virgil Earp, assisted by his brother Wyatt, and a sheriff's posse led by Behan, attempted to track the Bisbee stage robbers. At the scene of the holdup, Wyatt discovered an unusual boot print left by someone wearing a custom repaired boot heel. The Earps checked a shoe repair shop in Bisbee, known to provide widened boot heels, and were able to link the boot print to Frank Stilwell. Stilwell had just arrived in Bisbee with Spence, his livery stable partner, and Virgil and Wyatt arrested both of them at the stable for the stage robbery. Cowboy friends provided Stilwell and Spence with an alibi, saying they were elsewhere during the robbery, and the state robbery charges were dropped. Hot on their heels, Spence and Stilwell were re-arrested a month later on October 13th by Virgil Earp for the Bisbee robbery on a new federal charge of interfering with a mail carrier. The Cowboys saw the Earps' filing of federal charges as further evidence that they were being unfairly harassed and targeted by the Earps. They let the Earps know that they could expect retaliation. Please show your support by hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss the new episode. It was a cool and clear night on Saturday, March 18, 1882, when gunshots rang out around 11 p.m. Morgan Earp had been shot by assailants, who fired through a glass-windowed, locked door at the Campbell and Hatch Billiard Parlor in Tombstone. At the time, Morgan was playing a late round of pool against the parlor's owner, Bob Hatch. The shooters narrowly missed Wyatt Earp, who was watching the game. Spence's wife, Marietta, testified at the coroner's inquest that Spence, Frank Stilwell, and several others bragged about shooting Morgan, and that her husband had threatened her with violence 
if she told what she knew. The coroner's jury concluded that Spence and his accomplices were the suspects in Morgan's assassination. When she was called to testify at the preliminary hearing, the defense objected because her testimony was hearsay and because a spouse could not testify against her husband. The judge agreed and the charges were dismissed. However, when Wyatt Earp learned of the coroner's jury findings, he took action in his own hands. After escorting the still recuperating Virgil to the railroad in Tucson, he found Frank Stilwell lying in wait and killed him. Assembling a federal posse, he set out to find and kill the remaining cowboys whose friend's alibis or legal technicalities had gotten them off. Spence owned a ranch and woodcutting camp at South Pass in the Dragoon Mountains, where he employed Indian Charlie Cruz. Cruz was the lookout during the Morgan Earp shooting. And on March 20th, 1882, Wyatt Earp and a federal posse arrived at Spence's camp and asked for him. But Spence had turned himself in to the Coaches County Sheriff, Johnny Behan, figuring he was safer behind bars. When the Earp Posse learned Spence was in jail, they asked about Cruz. They soon found him and killed him. A year later, in the summer of 1883, Spence was working as a deputy sheriff in Georgetown, New Mexico, when he severely buffaloed or pistol whipped Rodney O'Hara, killing him. He was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to a five-year term in the Arizona Territorial Penitentiary. Less than 18 months later, he was granted a full pardon by the territorial governor. He later operated a goat ranch south of Globe, Arizona, near the Galero Mountains, with his longtime friend, Finn Clanton. He ran a mule team to bring supplies into the Globe area. Finn Clanton died in 1906, and Spence married Finn's widow four years later, in April of 1910, using his real name of Elliot Larkin Ferguson. Four years later, he died in 1914, and was buried in the Globe, Arizona Cemetery, in an unmarked plot next to Finn Clanton. Thank you so much for watching today. Be sure to hit that like button and click subscribe so you don't miss the new episode.